Imagine that you have two persons in front of you. The first person is a friend. The other person is a friend, is somebody you have never met. One is a friend, the other is a stranger. Understandably, you will greet the friend first. You might not even greet the stranger. And that is human nature. We are attracted to friends. We are attracted to familiar people. We, attra we are attracted to people we know. And then the question is asked, but why does God send strangers into our lives? And the answer is, because God visits us also through strangers. You can see the face of God in your friend. That is very normal, very natural, very human. But if you see the face of God in a stranger whose name you do not know, whose origin you do not know, you know nothing about this person, and yet you're able to see the face of God in that stranger, which is more heroic. To see the face of God in somebody you know, or to see the face of God in somebody you don't know. It is always a Christian tradition to look at strangers as very special people because in the words of the Bible, we have entertained angels when we entertain strangers. We thought we were just meeting a stranger, but an angel met us in this stranger of a person. But we are slowly losing the tradition of our Catholic faith that a stranger is a teacher, a stranger is a blessing, and a stranger must be offered hospitality because God comes to us through strangers. Your wife, your husband, your friends, your children, your parents, they can be faces of God for you. And that is natural because even Muslims and Buddhists believe that their family is an image of God. But when you see the face of God in a stranger and you allow a stranger to become your teacher, it takes a lot of supernatural grace to be able to do that. So I return to my question, why does God allow strangers to enter our lives? The first answer, my dear brothers and sisters, is this. God allows strangers because familiarity breeds contempt. Because you are so familiar, you take things for granted. And because you are so familiar, you presume that they will always be there. Because you are so familiar, you are so attached. You become so attached to this thing or to this person. Because of familiarity. Such that because of familiarity, we also sin by idolatry. We are almost worshipping the familiar people, the familiar things, the familiar places. And we don't like to go to strange and explored places, to strange and explored people, because we want ourselves secure. So, the strangers keep our feet flat on the ground. Because remember, to whom did the Lord manifest His glory when He was born? to strangers who came from foreign lands, and we call them Magi. To whom did he manifest? To shepherds who were strangers. They were not church people. To whom did Jacob, with whom did Jacob wrestle? With a stranger. Who saved the wounded man along the way to Jericho? A stranger Samaritan. My dear brothers and sisters, today, 
I invite you. Look at some stranger people, not with suspicion, not with disgust, but with trust and believe in your heart that as a stranger, the Lord visits you. The second reason why God allows strangers to come across our lives is to prevent us from being judgmental. The first one, familiarity, and then you take things for granted. The second one, because a stranger is somebody you have not met, that stranger, if you're open, should prevent you from being judgmental. Because you might feed a stranger, you might give alms to a stranger, you might sit down with a stranger and not knowing it, you have sat down, you have helped God himself. And uh, what happened to Abraham? In feeding the strangers, God gave him the miracle of his life. Martha and Mary did not feed a stranger, but Martha was too familiar with the guest that he took things for granted, that he thought, she thought, that the food was more important than the person. My dear brothers and sisters, strangers are blessings. Strangers are Christ's. Strangers are teachers. Strangers need not be suspected. Strangers need not be kicked out. Strangers need not be distanced because a stranger can be Jesus visiting you. Because the Lord himself said, whatever you do to this stranger of a prisoner, to this stranger who is hungry, to this stranger who is thirsty, you do to me. The stranger is God himself. 